Hey guys, welcome back to day two of Vlogmas. So if you missed day one of Vlogmas, make sure you go back and watch that. I'll link that video down below. But today we are finishing decorating the house for Christmas. And I'm also cooking a really fun vintage Christmas menu for dinner tonight. So last video I shared that I didn't get all of my Christmas decorating done in one day. So we're gonna finish that today. It's a Saturday, so we're just hanging out at home. I have nothing else to do except decorate and cook, which makes me super happy. So tonight for dinner, I am going to make some chicken with angel hair pasta a toasted walnut salad, a Parmesan bubble loaf, and some cherry bars. All of these recipes are coming out of vintage cookbooks, which I'll share with you later. I also got some new Christmas decorations that I ordered off of Amazon on Black Friday. So lots of fun and coziness in today's video. Let's get started. All right, so for dinner tonight, I am going to be making this Parmesan bubble loaf out of Betty Crocker's new Christmas cookbook. This one was published several times, but it looks like this most recent one is from 1993. Um, I find most of my vintage cookbooks on Etsy, but you can also find them on eBay as well. So to my mixer bowl, I've got my dough hook on here. I'm gonna add one packet of active dry yeast, and then I'm adding a quarter cup of warm water, one fourth of a cup of sugar, three fourths of a cup of milk. I just warm this up in the microwave for about a minute, and I'm just gonna mix that around just a tad. I added half a stick of softened butter in there. I'm just gonna mix that up. One egg. I'm gonna go ahead and add one teaspoon of salt and two cups of flour. Mix that up. Okay, and then the recipe says to knead for five minutes, so I'm just gonna go ahead and use my dough hook for that. Okay, so the dough is done. We need to let it rise for its first rise. So I'm just gonna go ahead and keep it in this um, bowl. I'll probably drizzle a little bit of olive oil on the top just to make sure it doesn't stick and then I'll cover it with the towel and we'll just let it rise for a couple of hours. All right guys, so I just got back from a work trip and I'm kind of tired of eating out <laughs> while I was gone all week. So it is definitely Factor to the rescue. Thank you to Factor for sponsoring today's video. I've been working with them for quite some time here on my channel and I have really loved getting their fresh, never frozen meals delivered right to my door, especially for times like these when I don't want to cook something myself. And I also love using them for lunches when I'm working from home. They have the best prepared meals out there. I'm not kidding, everything I have tried has been awesome. Okay, so this one is the garlic and herb chicken breast. I've had this one before, it's super delicious. It has smoked cheddar cauliflower grits. Hello, sir. Um, and some steamed broccoli as well. It smells really good. And if you're nervous about reheated chicken, which I know some people are because of like the texture, don't be. I've had so many of their meals that have chicken in them. And as you can see, it's super tender. You can cut it with a fork, very moist. It's not dry. It's just really, really, really good. Yum. So good. You can actually choose from over 35 flavor packed meals delivered right to your door. And they have a ton of different options. They have calorie smart meals that have around 550 calories or less per serving. They also have protein plus meals with 30 grams or more of protein per serving. They also have keto, vegan, and veggie options as well. So there's definitely something for everyone. Factor also offers gourmet plus meals as part of your weekly options which means you can get a little gourmet with your meal plan whenever you're craving something special. This is definitely the perfect option if you are tired of cooking or if you just don't <laughs> want to cook. Have Factor do the cooking for you. Super delicious meals and I really get like excited and look forward to eating them because I always find that when someone else cooks for you, it tastes better. And if you're the primary cook in your house, sometimes it just gets old making everything. So I love having these factor meals delivered right to me. Someone else can make the food and it tastes delicious. I also really love that all of their meals have nutritional facts on them. So it's super easy to um, plug those into, like I use my fitness pal um, and obviously you're gonna know exactly 
all of the macros that are in there if you're tracking that sort of thing. Okay, so if you guys wanna try out Factor, now is the perfect time. They are offering an awesome deal. You can get 50% off, yes, that's half off your first Factor box. All you need to do is go to factor75.com or you can also click the link below in my description box and use code CHAPIN50, that's CHAPIN50, and that's gonna get you 50% off your first box. So if you haven't tried Factor yet, I highly, highly recommend them. Once again, I'll have the link in the description box below. Use code CHAPIN50 to get 50% off your first box. I know you guys will love it. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and prep the dessert for tonight. This one is going to come out of this Hillsbury Holiday Classics. Uh, these little magazine, like mini magazine cookbooks. Do you guys remember these when they were at like the checkouts in the grocery store? I used to love these. This one is actually from 1983, which I think is super fun, but we're gonna make this recipe in here for cherry bars. I have never made these before, and I think it sounds really good. I love cherry pie, and this seems a lot easier. So, in my mixer here, I've got two sticks of softened butter. I'm gonna add one and three quarters of a cup of granulated sugar. And then one teaspoon of vanilla. I'm using this vanilla bean paste that I got from Amazon. I can link it down below. I always think it's just much more flavorful than regular vanilla extract, so we're just gonna cream this together. All right, while this is running on low speed, I'm gonna go ahead and add four eggs, one at a time. And scrape the sides down. Okay, next we're gonna do three cups of all-purpose flour. Okay, and then one and a half teaspoons of baking powder and we'll mix this up all right so this recipe calls to make it in a jelly roll pan so that's what i've got here this is a 15 by 10 all i've done is i've sprayed this with um non-stick cooking spray and then i have lined it with parchment paper and then sprayed it again so it says to spread half or i'm sorry two-thirds of the batter into the pan. I don't think this is gonna be very easy to do because this batter is like super thick and sticky. <laughs> so we will see. All right, so this definitely looks like a four-year-old did it, but I don't know any other better way to do it. I did think about taking another piece of parchment paper and spraying it and like trying to press it down, but the batter is just literally so sticky. I don't know that it's gonna make a difference. So we're gonna do the next layer, which is just one can of regular cherry pie filling. I wanna say I've had something similar to this at like maybe a Christmas or holiday family gathering a long, long time ago. Like maybe one of my aunts made it when I was a kid. But I can't remember exactly. There was a couple different choices for cherry pie filling. It's been a long time since I've bought cherry pie filling. One of them was like very cherry. It had extra cherries in it. Now maybe I'm thinking I should have gotten that one. <laughs> well, it's fine. Okay, and then the last step is just to drop some spoonfuls of dough on top here. My guess is that this kind of simulates somewhat of a top crust, although it's obviously not gonna cover the whole thing. So I'm just using a cookie scoop. I think that's gonna be probably the easiest since this batter is so, so sticky. So once these are finished baking and they cool, they do get a glaze on top of them, which is basically a powdered sugar glaze, but it has almond extract in it. So I think that will be really good. I really think like cherry and almond um, go really well together. Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas. So that's it. So I've got my oven set to 350 degrees. It says to bake for 35 to 45 minutes. All right, so our bars came out of the oven. I let them cool completely. I'm gonna go ahead and make the glaze. So I've got one cup of powdered sugar in here. I'm just gonna add about a tablespoon and a half of milk. And we can add more if we need to. And then I'm just gonna add half a teaspoon of almond extract. It seems kind of thick, but I actually think that that is perfect for drizzling. Almond extract. I actually have the sugar cookie recipe that I use 
has almond extract in it and that's part of the reason why I love it so much. Okay, so let's just drizzle this over. You know what I think would be really good? Is if we put sliced toasted almonds on top of this. I don't think my kids would appreciate that. I guess we could put it on half. I think that would be like a really great addition to this. Oh my gosh, doesn't this look so good? Okay, so I'm just gonna let this sit um, on the counter until after dinner and the glaze will um, probably harden up just a little bit. So our bread dough has risen. We're gonna go ahead and put this uh, together for the second rise. I've got some Parmesan cheese that I grated right here. Some melted butter. It occurred to me that um, after I decided to make this recipe that it's like monkey bread. <laughs> I don't know why I didn't read the recipe that thoroughly when I decided to make it, but here we go. Like a, sa like a savory monkey bread, right? Okay, so what we need to do is to cut this dough into 24 pieces. You don't have a bench scraper, by the way, and you like to bake and do things with bread, I highly recommend getting one. They're super inexpensive. Um, I'll link one down below. I've had this one for years, so I don't even remember where I got it at. But um, the other thing is that apparently I can't talk and chop at the same time. Okay, so hold, hold on a second. Let me, let me do one thing at a time. Okay, I've got a loaf. No, this is not a loaf. This is a tube pan. It's a tube pan that I've lined with parchment paper very messily, but I don't want it to stick. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna roll each of these little balls in melted butter and then in Parmesan cheese. And we're gonna place 12 in the bottom of the tube pan. What was I mentioning? Oh, yes, if you like to bake, one of the things that a bench scraper is also really good for is um, like, you, like, okay, I'll show you after I'm done with this, but you know how after you get done like rolling out pie crust or you know cookies or something like that, you'll have like a bunch of flour on your counter. Well, it makes cleanup super easy because then all you have to do is take your bench scraper and scrape it off. So this actually just reminded me, I haven't made monkey bread in a long time. And if you've ever made that, that that's basically what this is except you use um, like usually biscuit dough and then melted butter and then cinnamon and sugar. All right, so here's what the first layer looks like. Okay, so this is done. We're gonna go ahead and let it rise again uh, for another couple hours. So I'll just cover it up and we'll just stick it here on the back of the stove. Okay, so this is what I mean with the bench scraper. And I like it especially for my countertops because you can see this color of countertop that I have it is super hard to even tell. It's even dirty. So you just can scrape all your stuff out into a bowl and toss it out. Okay, so the salad that we're making is from the Betty Crocker's New Christmas Cookbook. It is the Roquefort and Toasted Walnut Salad. Um, I am going to go ahead and make the dressing. So for that, I need some toasted walnuts. Actually, I need toasted walnuts for both the dressing and the salad. So I've just got them in a skillet here. Um, they don't take long at all to toast, maybe like I don't know, five minutes over medium heat. You can also do it in the oven. If you want to, you just have to watch them and make sure that they don't burn. All right, so for the dressing for the salad, I've got in here some olive oil, toasted walnuts, uh, lemon juice, salt, pepper, and a garlic clove. Okay, so here's the dressing. I'm gonna taste it, see if it needs any salt or pepper. Put it in a jar and we'll let it sit until it's time to eat in the fridge. Here is our Parmesan bubble bread. I think that's what it's called. I'm gonna put this in the oven at 375 degrees for about 30 minutes. Okay, so for dinner tonight, I'm making the dressed chicken breast with angel hair pasta. This recipe is out of this fun cookbook from 1991 called Favorite Brand Name Recipes, Treasury of Christmas. And then it has um, 
Eagle Brand, Lipton, Hershey's, Campbell's, Duncan Hines, Jell-O. I love these like brand name cookbooks. They're so fun. Okay, so woo, I've got some melted butter in my skillet here. I'm gonna add my chicken breast. These are just seasoned with salt and pepper. Okay, so I brown the chicken on both sides. I'm gonna take it and remove it to a plate and keep it warm. And then I'm gonna add a third of a cup of white wine. Actually, I'm using cooking wine. All right, so I measured out a cup of ranch and a third of a cup of um, Dijon mustard. I know it sounds odd, but I'm just gonna trust the process here. So I stirred that into the wine and butter mixture. Um, before I put the chicken back in here, I'm just gonna taste this and see if it needs any salt or pepper or anything. Okay, so this is the Parmesan, I forget what it's called, Parmesan bubble bread. So, I'm gonna flip it over onto a plate. Anyway, just a word of warning. The tube pan, this tube pan does leak if you, apparently if you have butter in it, which I've only ever cooked angel food cake in it before, so I didn't realize that. So make sure you definitely cook it on a cookie sheet. And it's already falling apart a little bit, but I don't know if you can actually, probably have to slice it. Oops. I mean, it's not bad. It looks like angel food cake. It's not. <laughs> it's got lots of butter and warm and cheese, so. Okay, cool. Okay, so I put some blue cheese on my salad. I did keep it separate because not everyone likes blue cheese. And here's how the chicken turned out. I did make some angel hair pasta and just tossed that with a little bit of butter. So it turned out pretty good. Chicken is nice and tender. Okay, so I definitely have to recommend the cherry bars. They turned out really, really good. Definitely recommend this recipe. Okay, so I have a few more boxes of decorations to unpack. I think this one has my some of my mugs in it. Oh yeah, more mugs. This is actually a centerpiece for a candle. Oh, and then I do have a wax warmer in here. I'll have to see if I have any wax melts but I got that at Walmart a few years back in my tree skirt. Okay, so there's actually a bunch more ornaments in this um, box. These are like all of the keepsake ornaments that I've gotten the kids over the years. Let's see. Yeah, this one's from 2015. Shopkins, 2017. Oh, this one's ramen. That was last year. Okay, so the last box I have to unpack is the mantle, so I'm gonna go ahead and decorate that quick. like Milo's red vest. Are you wearing a coat? Huh? Are you a cold little boy? Anyway, okay, finally got everything up. Thank goodness. So I put a few knickknacks over here. I might still try to pick up some things on clearance this year. Ideally, I'd like to kind of change all the bookshelves in here to Christmas themed, but we'll see if we can pick up some more things on sale. These two little guys actually got on Black Friday because I did specifically look for a few 
things on Black Friday that were Christmas themed. I have a Home Alone mug and a Starbucks mug that I got several, several years back. I always like how the mantle turns out. I have um, decorated it this way for quite a few years now. Our stockings are from Pottery Barn and they are the personalized ones. They're a little bit of an investment, but I do really like them. I mean, obviously they're gonna last us for forever, <laughs> probably, and we use them every year. So I got those several years back. Some of these items are just, I don't know, I've either gotten them probably from like Joanne Crafts. I know for sure these glass um, trays I got from Aldi one year. And then a lot of the Santa mugs I've just kind of collected throughout the years. These are like some floral stems that I got from Joanne. Pretty sure I got this Happy Holidays sign from Joanne as well. So like how that turned out. And then I can't remember where I picked this sign up from last year. It is reversible. Maybe I got it from Walmart. I can't remember. Anyway, I thought it looked cute right there. And I put a little Santa mug up there. Um, I actually did not end up putting all of the ornaments on the tree this year just because we have so many um, So I don't know. I know I said last year that maybe I was gonna get another tree, but we'll see I need to whoops sorry Milo. I need to rearrange these blankets and stuff and these Pillows probably need to be lint rolled because the dogs I picked this Christmas blanket up last year at hy of all places. I know, kind of weird. And then uh, this red door I always put up there um, every year. I just like it because we have a red door on our house and I think it's cool. Um, actually, we got this in the mail today from Helix. Um, you guys know I work with them a lot here on my channel and they sent me a Christmas gift, which I thought was nice. But it's like um, this knit, but it's like a weighted blanket. I don't know, Kira was using it earlier today. She likes it. Hi, baby. Don't go potty. Go to bed. Hmm? Someone was commenting on one of my last videos that said Milo always looks worried. <laughs> he does. He, he always has like a, wor a worried look on his face. What are you worried about? Hmm? You're the luckiest dog in the world. I know. I did put a few little finishing touches on my front table. I got some of my twinkle lights out. Put this big snowflake up. I think I got this at Target one year. Um, put some lights on my tiered tray and there's my little um, Disney house that I put out every year. There's the rest of the boxes that need to go back downstairs. Uh, this little wreath actually was the first wreath that I bought to put on the door of our apartment many, many years ago. So. I always like getting it out. I just think it's fun to hang on my pantry door there. And then I just, I don't know. I, I feel like I didn't do a great job decorating the coffee bar, but I don't know. It probably needs to be organized a little bit. Um, I did put some of my Christmas mugs out and I have this white ceramic tree that I got from Aldi one year, a mug that my sister got me, some more Santa mugs. Um, this tree lights up. I got it from, oh geez, I got it like from the gift shop at the hospital I worked at like over 20 years ago. It's been like a long time since I've had that, but I always like it. Um, and then I always think this little Aldi house is, is fun too. The only thing I'm not like super wild about is this business over here. I don't know what I'm going to do with this yet. I'm waiting for inspiration to strike. Oh, I did want to show you guys this thing. So I also picked this up on Black Friday. Um, they have like several different kinds. This one is, obviously they're all like snow globes, but they light up and you can see they're like very sparkly on the wall. I just love it. I actually got one of these, I think for Adam's aunt last year for Christmas, she collects snow globes, but I don't know. I really like it. I would recommend it. I'll link it down below. Um, I wanna say I got it for like less than 20 bucks, 20 bucks on Black Friday. But this one has little cardinals in there on a tree. Um, I can't remember if I told you guys about this or not in my last video. I don't know. Uh, anyway, this is a willow tree nativity set. Um, I actually got this for my mom like many, many years back. And then when she passed away several years ago, we were cleaning out her stuff. And I asked my stepdad if I could take it. 
Um, and he's like, yeah, I don't want it. <laughs> he's like, yeah, I don't really want it. Um, so I've been setting it up ever since. And then these are a few of my Lennox Happy Holly Days. This one is like a treat tray or a, a treat plate, I guess you would say. And then this one is um, like a serving platter. I did go ahead and put a candle in here, but I haven't lit it yet. I'm going to get ready to go to bed here soon. So I'm probably obviously not going to light it tonight. Um, but the kids have their advent calendars out here. I think I showed you guys these last time, but they've since been opening them. Connor has had a lot of fun with his um, Pokemon advent. And then Kira got the Hello Kitty advent. I guess I forgot this box. I have to decide if I'm going to put this up or not. I probably will. I need to get some more lights, though. So maybe I'll get those from Walmart tomorrow. But this is the garland that goes on the staircase. So I guess I forgot about that. I probably need to put that up. I don't quite know what I'm going to do with these dishes yet. I think this is an old nativity set. I think my grandma gave this to me. I can't remember. Um, I did fill up our little candy sleigh with... Jolly Ranchers. Um, I think what I guess what I'll do is I'll take these dishes and put them over in my little Hutch coffee bar type thing. I think that'll probably work. I'll just have to make sure I can take these dishes out and put them down in the bottom. I do have these little push button lights in here. The only thing I don't like about them is that they are battery operated. They take triple A's and the batteries go dead pretty quickly. So I don't really think they're like a long-term solution, but it does look pretty like when you have dishes in there and it's all lit up. All right. Well, thanks you guys for spending the day with me. It's getting late. So I need to get this video up and go to bed because I have a lot of stuff I have to do tomorrow and I'm traveling again for work this week. Yay! So I'll try to vlog some of that. Um, I do intend on, I don't let Milo in, I do intend on posting a video every single day during the month of December. However, some of the videos may go up a little bit late, like later in the evening. In a perfect world, I would get them all posted at 7 p.m. Central <laughs> every single night in December. Um, but I don't know how realistic that is right now. I'm trying to work to get ahead on a lot of things, um, but that's probably not gonna happen until like the second week in December until I can take some time off. So until then, we're flying by the seat of our pants, but we're gonna get it all done because moms make it all happen, right? Okay, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys tomorrow again for another video. Bye.